All right, a lot of parents look for the ease that comes with putting a screen in front of their kids or putting their kids in front of a screen, but that, as you might expect, also has its drawbacks. Definitely. A new study published in JAMA Pediatrics shows that allowing very young children to access televisions and other screens, including those cell phones, of course, could lead to sensory challenges later in childhood. And joining us now in studio to talk more about this is Fox 5 medical contributor Dr. Richard Shafu. Thank you so much for joining us here, today. Man. So tell us, what did this study find? Yeah, it's fascinating because what they looked at was they looked at screen time and they looked at children. This was a pretty large study. It involved almost 1,500 uh, children that between the ages of, well, they looked at them at 12 months, at 18, at 24 months, and then again in follow-up at 36 months. And what they found was that for, that for children of the age of 12 months and younger, any screen time whatsoever increased this issue of sensory uh, integration issues up to over 100%. Once you got to 18 months, every hour beyond that increased the risk by 23%. So it's significant. And these are things like uh, uh, what we call sensory overload or sensory stimulating behavior, sensory avoidance, mm. sens uh, sensory uh, sensitivity to maybe to loud sounds or loud noises and then what we call low registration and these were some children that avoided eye contact or weren't you know we're not necessarily responding to vo voices so all this is indicative of the fact that this may uh, have a significant effect on on neurosensory development is there anything that's known more long term because if you think about I mean obviously you know we were put in front of televisions but right we weren't put in front of iPads right mm -hmm. so that's yes. this has been around 15 20 years at this point so is there a longer term view where you look at people who are maybe in their teens now and, and the effect it may have on no, them? I'm, I'm sure there are, there are those studies that are going on, but 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 you're right and part of it we, we do know researchers Neuroscientists already understand that there is an association between some of the um, ADHD and, mm -hmm. and the autism spectrum disorders uh, where excess screen time has deleterious effects. But again, we're looking at what we consider the neurotypical population, which is the vast majority of the population. And what was, I think, very profound about this study was that during the elasticity, the, 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 the time where the brain is is, is really developing those neuro, neural connections. The neurons are seeking connectivity. Uh, even a small amount of screen time can confuse the brain, can, can stimulate the neurons, and have it much more difficult to create the normal synapses, the normal connections. What will be interesting is what you said, if there's mm. some long-term long longitudinal studies to look at that, because I'm obviously older, but I mean, you know, but, but we weren't, you know, we didn't have screens when, when I grew up and television wasn't 24 hours a day and mm -hmm. you go outside and play. And, mm -hmm. and they found definitely associations between more screen time in the older age group and increased risk of obesity, mm -hmm. um, of, you know, developmental delay, of, of poor academic performance. So there's definitely this longer term association. And is there any amount of screen time that's actually okay for kids? And I'm sure that might change on ages, right? It does, Eric. So essentially, what the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that for children really under the age of two, there should be zero screen mm. time. And after the age of two, probably at max one to two hours of screen time per day. But part of the problem is that much of the education that's now done for children is done online. Yeah, yeah. And so there is that, you know, there is that concern. And then of course it's hard as a parent to to monitor this, although, you know, as parents we put screen times on. If a child is on doing their online work, what's to stop them from switching to YouTube or Google yeah. or somewhere else and doing something that maybe doesn't have an educational For, for those especially point. young children, you know, a lot of parents, I mean, they're working parents, yeah. and they're yes. busy parents, right? Yes. And you put on Daniel Tiger or something that, yes. you know, that's, that's fit for that age group or something yes. that's an educational game, uh, whatever it may be, they might feel like they're doing the right thing. Is there, is there an, a positive element to it? So there's probably a positive element to it, but again, I think what the researchers were looking at was duration, mm -hmm. not necessarily content. That would be another interesting study to see, you know, what is the difference in, in, in effects. But we just know that, that the neural uh, development is critical within those first two years of life and stimulation by long-term, you know, screen time we know can have some deleterious effects.
All right, good information for especially parents of young children out there to know all about because it's easy. You know, it's always easy to be like, oh, yeah, and it's inevitable. It's just all yeah. around us. Yeah. It's difficult. It's hard to hard to limit it. All right, yeah. Dr. Zephyr, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. the insight.